welcome to Exhibition. And hello, Michael Taylor. Hello, Richard. Thanks for having me. I'm delighted uh, that you're that you're there. Um, and uh, of course, there actually for you is South Africa. You're in Cape Town at the moment. Is that right? That's right. That's where I live. That's where I work from. Great that you Good. could join us. Uh, and um, and your exhibition is this is awkward at M Contemporary in Sydney. Um, and bouncing off that title, um, can you sort of start to introduce us to your work through that that intersection of of art and and some fairly astute social observation? Well, my background is uh, in in graphic design, in visual communication, and illustration. So it all started from a, a love for for narrative art, and. Uh, through observing life in that sense um, and putting it down on paper, it, it, it turned into what seems like a, an art that is a social commentary uh, or social observation. Uh, it started as, as a form of escapism, uh, the figures that I did uh, 10 years ago, and I started um drawing drawing these faces these expressions um that have a very uh, satirical uh, feel about them uh, which is why the work seems to be uh, could, could seem to be like a social commentary what i'd like to do perhaps to yes. to to clarify some of this uh, sense of how you move in in certain themes or certain directions is to go to some particular examples. Let's uh, let's have a look at a couple of works. Let's begin with uh, the objectionable friend. Why is this person an objectionable friend? Uh, the objectionable friend, obviously speaking about uh, the, the, there's always someone there that uh, you, you don't really want to um, be spending your time with. And, and, and I can imagine uh, a, a situation where going to your first social gathering after a lockdown, for example, chances are you'll probably be spending time with someone you didn't want to spend your time with, actually, uh, as, as the first outing. Um, but in the end, This Is Awkward uh, really speaks about even those things that we crave and miss about social environments or social activities, um, always having something that uh, you also dislike. So immediately there's always that, that balance, that counter, counterbalance between what you like and what you don't like. And that may take us in a sense to uh, the title of the exhibition, you know, as you said, this is awkward. Um, so uh, could you give us a little bit of a sense of that as a choice of title? The idea for the exhibition when making it was, uh, it came from a, a very happy place. I wanted to make a, a, a body of work that was, was about joy, that was about being happy, being able to spend time with, uh, with your friends and, and really just actually being in a good space, in a, in a good headspace. That quickly turned into um, <laughs> um, also the, rea the reality of things, where uh, th that situation will actually never exist without uh, that awkwardness. Social media, for example, even if one's life exists there as, uh, as, 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 as being sociable only on, on your phone or through your phone, um, it still comes with um, that that hint of awkwardness or sadness. In some of the works, there is a, a, an implication, perhaps even through the title, of a sense of isolation as well as social interaction. Uh, a work like Ghost in the Garden um, seems to refer to a, a degree of isolation and also has a very mysterious watermelon in it. Can you can you take us to that work? In my work, there's definitely an element of exaggeration. That exaggeration uh, 
coming from a, a history of narrative art where there needs to be a feature or a device which, which points to something uh, fantastical or, or dreamlike, uh, so, something that uh, highlights the, the, the personality or character of the figure. Ghost in the Garden certainly um, has to do with uh, the after effects of isolation or having been indoors for so long. Uh, I, I imagine this, she's uh, uh, really stepping into, into her garden after a very long period, uh, being welcomed by uh, the, the animal life in the garden, but also these monstrous uh, uh, fruits um, and, and plants, things that have completely overgrown or gone wild uh, while she's been uh, spending time indoors, uh, not catching any rays. You mentioned exaggeration, but uh, presumably in the work Bring the Fun Home, there's no exaggeration at all, is there? <laughs> Bring the Fun Home is, is a good example of of the works that, um, the way I approach the works, which, which is meant to um, look like a stage, that the works, uh, that the figures look um, as if they're standing at, at the edge of, a, uh, literally of a stage and a very um, shortened or um, not very deep background. With all the TikTok that's going on and uh, videos, literally everyone doing that and keeping themselves busy with that, uh, bring the fun home uh, is, to me, seems like an example of that. Someone setting up a, a little stage at home and uh, a performance um, for themselves, something to occupy themselves with, entertain themselves with. A little bit of a, a modern day tableau vivant, for example. Complete with roller skates. Uh, the more excitement, uh, the better, exactly. You did make mention a little while ago of, uh, of, of some degree of, of perception of social satire, even if that was perhaps not necessarily your intent. Uh, but mm -hmm. the social committee uh, does seem to have that that, that awareness and perhaps just a gentle cynicism about a certain degree of social organization. Absolutely. Uh, the, the three characters in the work must be the, the, uh, the worst choice of uh, members for a social committee uh, chosen by um, uh, whoever it's left up to, but probably really bad grouping or uh, combination of characters uh, happen to be in charge of everyone else's uh, social activity or behavior. Especially the figure in the background has a, has a almost a, a clown-like appearance. The extreme nature of uh, these characters or people left in charge to um, show what uh, social life is about. Who are these people? Uh, why do we put our faith in them as, uh, as examples of social behavior <laughs> or choice uh, sociability? Yeah. Let's move to the way in which uh, you portray people in the paintings themselves. And how did that method of, of portraying characters develop in your art practice? I studied illustration for three years and quickly converted it uh, into a, a master's in, in drawing, uh, quite a sort of formal drawing degree, uh, where I focus on landscape drawing. Uh, but coming back to figuration after a couple of years, and the figures became very theatrical more and more. So they look like they're dancing, performing, telling a story, again, something on a stage. The work, it does move a little bit between working on canvas and on paper, but most of the time I work on paper. Again, this comes from my days doing illustration and working with gouache. The gouache has such color intensity, which an acrylic or oil medium does not have for me there's a difficulty to it. You can only work it 
so much, otherwise it does go muddy and uh, you'll lose what you draw. So uh, in that um, sense, I not challenge myself, but I, I like to keep it interesting for myself working with the gouache because there are these limitations to how far I can push the figure, um, how much I can change it. It's, it, it's not a layering process. It's, it's telling this, a story, a narrative in its uh, quickest um, essential form possible. Returning to the characters, are they primarily the products of your imagination or do you sometimes work from life in portraying them? They're all imagined. I, I, I will sit down and make a sketch again with something in mind. I'll uh, create some scenario in my head and, tr and try and recreate that in a sketch. And from the sketch, uh, I'll redraw it uh, at a larger scale. Um, but in, in that translation process, it, it turns into something else again entirely, hopefully as well. Uh, I prefer it if, if it if that happens. And then the characters um, become something. They become, they take on a, a personality. How do you decide on the type of background, the type of contextual elements that you put the characters into? I enjoy bringing the foreground and background uh, together in the most uh, immediate sense possible as well. In most cases, it's, it's again, it's meant to, to look a bit like a stage setup. Uh, I, I generally refer to most of the elements in the images as props. I think that's similar to the way I title the works, the elements in the background or around the figures need to be uh, juxtaposed in a sense that they almost make no sense or that they pull the meaning of the work or the character uh, into a different direction. If someone's slightly more confused by what they're looking at, hopefully they'll spend a little bit more time uh, trying to figure out what is going on. Uh, and the title is always so important because it adds uh, a stranger feeling uh, or, or idea to the work. Is there a particular title in this exhibition that you think exemplifies that, uh, that possibility of, of being a little mysterious, being a little confusing and, and drawing the viewer in? I think Three, Three Blind Mice really speaks about uh, the exhibition as a whole. For me, it has the, the flattening of the full and background, definitely. Uh, there's a, a strange kaleidoscopic uh, environment that these three figures find themselves in. They're really trying to feel their way through the, through the background, through the image. Um, also trying to figure out almost who they are to themselves. Uh, why, why are they in this place? Uh, why can't they get out of it? Uh, which uh, really speaks about our current state of mind, uh, about lockdown, but uh, that confusion, that, that blindness to it, uh, to the situation, maybe uh, it is, is a good example of, of well, quite literal almost of, of awkwardness. Uh, another favorite, a personal favorite on the show would be uh, the barbecue survivors, the couple who, who narrowly escapes the, the end of uh, a barbecue, a, a social gathering that's gone terribly wrong and somewhere on a remote island and they make it off the island. I, I, I do find that image quite funny, uh, almost the darkest, but um, uh, the, uh, the most humorous almost um, of the body of work. And uh, just their, their glance back at, at what was and cleverly escaping the situation um, also describes uh, or puts it all uh, into 
uh, perspective for me. It, uh, it, it sums it up nicely. We discussed uh, the processes of isolation as well as social interaction uh, a little earlier. Uh, and there's a work um, which has very little colour and much of the works in this exhibition are, are yes. very colourful. Uh, but the work Never Have I Ever uh, is perhaps much more graphic in its approach. Is there a reason for that differentiation? I, I didn't plan for it to be black and white specifically. I, I think I started the work using possibly a lot of ink and it turned out to be just a, a black and white work. And also um, the black and white images has a, have a very filmic quality to it, a very sort of cinematic um, aspect about it. Uh, which I feel this this gentleman in Never Have I Ever uh, probably also has. He again seems like someone, one of those unfortunates who were stranded somewhere on a island or at at some resort, couldn't make it back home, and has to spend his time there thinking about everything that he has done in life. Uh, but something has come to mind, probably being stranded somewhere on his own. <laughs> Well, it's been intriguing to share many of the stories of these works, uh, and, and I hope it hasn't been too awkward, but Michael Taylor, <laughs> thanks very much for sharing your exhibition with us. Thanks very much, Richard.